Ooh, guys, I got a treat. So if you don't know who you're looking at, um, you need to watch more video. This is uh, just to my left is Spencer Keepers. To his left, Ernest Langdon. Um, these guys are amazing. I got two things to show you with these guys today. Uh, so I'm going to flip it around so that you can see better and hear better. But um, the stuff that Langdon Tactical is doing with the Beretta 92G, I, honestly, it's it's space magic. And uh, Spencer's holsters are legit, so hang on. All right, so on, yeah. yeah, so play the, we can play Ernest the has got his on, and, and uh, I'm, of course Spencer has his on. You know I'm an appendix guy. Correct. Talk to us about about why why your holster that you won't make one for me because I'm a special snowflake, but why for non-special snowflakes your holsters are awesome. So the main thing I think that sets our holsters apart from a lot of them on the market is the ability to infinitely adjust ride height and cant over about three quarters of an inch right where it needs to be. Um, the other thing that really sets ours apart is the narrowness of it. We have about the narrowest holster, appendix holster on the market. You only have a finite amount of room between the crease in the leg and the important parts in the middle. That's where that gun and holster needs to go. Yep. Uh, so the narrower we can make that, more people that can carry it. If you're a really small guy or gal, you don't have a lot of room to be in there. So the, the narrower we make that, the better it'll be for you. We're also the only ones that roll the uh, muzzle around. So you have a rolled edge on the muzzle. Uh, and for me and a lot of people, that's huge. Uh, it really per creates a real good comfort spot. Uh, where you don't have too much of a Tidex coming down, you know, cutting into you. Um, we make several different models. Fortunately, some of them not on the website, just like this PX4 Compact Carry, Ernest Langdon edition that I'm holding right now. Send us an email at keepersconcealment.com. You can get through us on our website right there, and uh, we can get you hooked. So that is a full <laughs> house build, Langdon Tactical Custom, Beretta 92. Yes. Langdon Tactical and Robar. Uh, I sent this to Ernest last year and said, dude, I want a full house custom 92. And this is what I got back. Uh, so Spencer, what made you want a 92? You got to tell us that first. So Cause that's not I, typical. I wanted a 92. Honestly, the reason I wanted to go to a DASA gun is so that when I have a student in a class that's running a DASA gun, I can say, with 100% confidence, this is how you need to run the gun. Uh, I've been known as a Glock guy and a Glock instructor, if you will, for a long time. And uh, I wanted to explore the DASA guns so that I could become a more well-rounded instructor. Uh, I spent time on a 1911. I spent a lot of time on a Glock slash striker fired gun. So now I wanted to go, you know, that hardest gun of all if you will the DASA gun but what I found out is it's not that hard at all in fact I prefer it now I can carry any gun I want to and this is the gun that I have on me when I'm out and about I either have this or I have a PX4 compact carry on board both, and it's from uh, Ernest as well so some of the things that Ernest did to this is it's magic folks it's just it, it's magic the DA pull on this is roughly six pounds. Wait, 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 say, say it again. The DA pull is roughly six pounds, but it is the smoothest, silkiest smooth trigger pull you will ever see. It's, it's ridiculous, a it, six pound so, double action hammer? So wait, wait the, till you try it. <laughs> the, the coolest thing is, is <clears throat> handing this gun to a traditional DASA guy oh. and then them going about halfway through the first DA pull, stopping and turning around, looking at you and go, oh my God. <laughs> and then watch them shoot a dime size group at 10 yards. Huh. Easy. So, Ernest, why don't you go through everything you yeah, did well, to this, the gun? Because this it's is just a magic to me. Full, full, full house gun. We did everything you can think of to this gun. So, it's so to start with, we I, I do a carry bevel, and my carry bevel includes a lot of things that, that some people uh, may or may not do. Um, radius underneath the trigger guard here, which is a big deal because on a Beretta, those sharp corners will eat you alive. And, and I don't um, have a Glock knuckle anymore. Yeah. No Glock knuckle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, 
radius on the inside of the trigger guard. And the, you, I don't even know if you know this yeah, or not, okay, but, yeah, but this sharp edge it's... right here uh, is what shaves Kydex and does all that other stuff, makes the gun not want to draw well. Yes. It's also, you know, radius in uh, a couple other places here. If you look at the front side right here, this is also radius. Of course, I beveled as Magwell uh, as well. So this is beveled and blended. And it's not so much like a lot of guys just go in and just put up uh, an angle on there and go it's beveled it's beveled fairly deep into the gun uh, and that helps you know when you do insert it but it's not quite lined up it kind of falls into place better that way um, normally knocking corners off here actually the back corners here on the beaver tail area uh, is also there are also knocked off um, and doesn't make a big difference until you're on the range and you've shot, you know, you've got four or 500 rounds down range on a hot, sweaty day. And that, that's when you notice the corner. Uh, back, back edges of the slide, this is a big one here with a lot of guys when you grip the gun really high. Yes. Um, those back corners on the Berettas are razor sharp and they'll lay you open. So we, we knock that down, take care of that issue. So there's a lot of little places that we uh, knock the corners off on the gun. And it does a couple of things. Not only does it just feel different when you pick the gun up and you go to shoot it, guys, totally. the Beretta guys go this way, whoa, that's not the same thing that I'm used to feeling. Uh, but it makes the gun wear better as well. So when you do put a finish on there, uh, Cerakote, this is um, Rogard, uh, black Rogard on here from Robar, uh, those sharp edges create wear points on the finish. And when you radius those edges off, it doesn't start to look like crap nearly as fast, right? Yeah. Especially in a, in a, in a, in a Kydex holster. Um, this gun also, uh, all the metal parts uh, on the gun, internally and externally, we put MP3 on. And MP3 is a nickel Teflon finish uh, that is basically electric nickel with Teflon impregnated in it. And uh, Robar has perfected that. I mean, they, there's other people out there doing nickel Teflon. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't stack up and, it, and this is not just me talking I've actually talked to a couple of people in the industry because I was like well who else does this maybe I can and you start talking to guys that do finish work in the in the around the country and they'll go yeah Robar's kind of figured that out mm -hmm. right um, so really really great finish uh, for all the metal parts because it makes them super slick um, and where it you know people talk about lubricity and and all this type of stuff with metal parts uh, in the case of this mp3 it really does make a difference and i think you know it's a shiny finish unfortunately but it it's hard to beat and that's where you really see uh, especially in that da pull uh, in that da <laughs> right? pull um you really start to notice that difference uh on the gun mm -hmm. So we should put you on camera and let you pull the trigger. Uh, you haven't pulled the trigger yet. I haven't. Yeah. Uh, the G conversion. We did, oh yeah, yeah. We did so we did. That so this G is the conversion. Beretta's uh, decock only conversion. So this is a 92 A1 uh, that we did the, the conversion to. Um, and so the, this is an F model gun, and we put the G model uh, conversion on it. So it's just a swap and part converts it to, right. to G. The other yeah. thing I'd like to say, folks. Um, with, with this gun right here, as John knows, I won the Top Shooter Award at the Range Master 20th Year Reunion uh, Instructor Class. Uh, with There were about 56 really good shooters there. Uh, and I won a turbo pin from Gabe White. I actually outshot Gabe on his standards that day with this gun. So uh, I think I proved you can shoot a DA gun fast and accurately. Shh, hey, don't, shh, shh, don't tell uh, I know. It's I know. impossible it's, to shoot them uh, well. I, Anybody I, I that know. can is a magician, an amazing shooter. You can't shoot them well. It's, it just can't. You gotta it, use it. It has nothing to do Two with Two trigger pulls, it's it, impossible. It's nothing to do with practice. <laughs> right. It's nothing to do with training. No, right. They're not, they're hard, super hard to shoot. I'm not sure, but Ernest might be being sarcastic. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Just a little. Maybe. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the trigger on that gun a couple times. So, of course, gun's clear, right? Gun's empty. Um, yeah. Wow. Smooth. So, of course, i got to decock it, right? And just get a feel. My gracious. It's like butter. Right? I mean, it, so... Yeah, I, it's... it's so the thing with a double action trigger pull normally is you're that 11, 12 pounds, you know, you're really fighting it. You got a two pound gun in your hand, but this is, I mean, you really do have a smooth, wow. Okay. Now All try, right. Now try the single action. Okay. Well, you know, now, so if it's single action, you've got this super light, wow, just delightful, accurate. I mean, obviously. 
So there's a reason, folks, that they're doing this, okay? So if I was going to go to the Pasta Blaster, <laughs> this would have to be it. Um, and I'm going to put Ernest back on camera and Spencer because I, from what I've heard, and I'm going to ask them, um, you can actually get a drop-in trigger kit for these and, and get this kind of trigger, even if you didn't do all the rest of it. That's a that's a roll bar gun. A PX4 yeah, so this is a this is a PX4 compact carry. So this is a gun that comes from Beretta with uh, the the uh, great sniper gray Sarah coat on the slide. It comes with stealth levers, decock, the Ameriglow sight setup, um, uh, extended magazine release button, the talon grips come in the box. It comes with the competition trigger group, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we what we did was we brought these in at Robar and did a package. This is a uh, basically what we call a mod 5 package so it has a spurless hammer which I'm a big fan of on these guns the, the barrel's been crowned back a little bit to it kind of looks cool is the biggest thing there um, it's got mp3 barrel barrel cam hammer sear all the pins and the trigger work and stuff have been done as well and so it has a really nice smooth DA on it not quite as smooth as, and light as uh, as the the 92s can get because it's, it's a polymer frame to gun not a uh, sure, but this is an amazing shooting little gun. It's really an interesting thing. Um, uh, there's actually quite a few people here at this conference that are shooting this gun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's become a very popular carry gun because it shoots like a full size gun. It's a compact gun. It's like Glock 19 size, 15 round magazine, uh, nine millimeter. At, you know, 1.2 inches wide. It looks wide, but it's actually not nearly as wide as it looks. It's kind of the way that the shape of the gun is. Um, it's a great uh, carry gun because because of the, the back of the slide kind of rounds off. It doesn't have that telltale square base back of the gun that makes it, you know, obvious that you're carrying yeah. a gun, right? Um, and uh, it is a unbelievably flat shooting gun. It shoots like a full size gun, and uh, and you don't you tell people that and they go, oh, 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 oh. and then you get them on the line, especially if you you stick, you know. A Glock 19 and a P07 and you know other similar size guns and they shoot them back to back and inevitably it's kind of like the DA pole they shoot a couple shots and they look at you and go really you know shoot a couple more shots and and they they're very very surprised so uh, that's uh, also a really really popular gun that we're doing this is a PX4 full size so this is a uh, what we call the px4 carry this is an exclusive from langdon tactical so all of the things that you can get on the compact carry come in this gun there are three magazines 217 and a 20 round magazine extended mag button improved trigger um ameriglow sights uh, cerakoted slide talon grips in the box stealth levers all of that stuff has been done to the gun uh, so this is a great gun if you either want to carry a full-size gun or maybe you want a companion uh, full-size gun for the your compact carry that you're carrying so it's a it's a good shooting gun and uh, we're getting getting people kind of excited about this too so uh, another gun that's coming from Langdon Tactical and we're also doing some row bar packages on this one as well yeah so that's the this is a Wilson Combat Centurion Tactical Centac, correct. Yeah, yeah, Centac. great gun this, yeah. you know for great gun free value so folks all I did was got on Ernest's website ordered a uh, trigger job in a bag uh, got that from them pretty quick uh, Watched the video that they have on uh, YouTube on how to put it in uh, Took the gun apart put the trigger job in a bag in it um, Put the grips back on it, and I have probably about 90 plus percent of the full house custom trigger job in this gun uh, buttery smooth Roughly six pound DA pull. Wow. And then roughly three and a three half, and yeah. half ish single, uh, single action, very short reset, uh, nice and crisp. Uh, this is a great little gun. And I put a few other trigger job in the bags and some of my other Berettas because I have obviously become a very big Beretta fan. Um, uh, if you follow me on Facebook or uh, Instagram, you'll know that. <clears throat> it's really easy to do uh, and one of the things I really enjoy about the guns is the mechanicalness of them uh, it's not like a Glock where you you know you get a three thirty second punch and you can do basically anything you want to it uh, you know you've got to have some different punches and maybe a hammer you know and stuff like that but I, I enjoy the heck out of putting 
those kits in these yeah. guns. It's really easy to do, guys. So I know somebody's going to ask, on a six-pound double-action pull, are you having any problems with ignition? Are you having any failure to fire problems? No, not whatsoever. I, I have shot every kind of ammo there <clears throat> is out there, and I have had no uh, ammo-related failures on uh, on any of my Berettas. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I think they're... I think they're good to go. And and you can get them in different trigger pools. Yeah, so right. right. We sell uh, the packages you can get um, anywhere from an 11 pound hammer spring to a 16 pound hammer spring. Now, 16 hammer pound hammer spring would be the equivalent of a Beretta 92D hammer spring, and then we go down from there. Uh, these are chrome silicone springs. They're ISMI chrome silicone springs uh, that I'm getting from Wilson Combat. He's had them made. Uh, some of them, the 11 pound spring, <coughs> is an exclusive that I had made uh, by ISMI. Uh, so it's a chrome silicone spring, which the interesting thing about them is they, their uh, life cycle on that spring is significantly longer than a music regular music wire spring. Uh, and the big issue is they're less, uh, they have less of an issue with heat. So when they get them really hot, it's not as big deal on the hammer spring, it's a bigger deal on like the recoil spring. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the, the spring really hot, it'll start to take a set much faster than a, uh, uh, than a chrome silicone spring. But we've got 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16 pound hammer springs that we do. We kind of skip 15 because it's not enough of a difference mm -hmm. in there. Um, the reality is for most people when they say, hey, I, I just don't want to have to worry about it. Um, if you're shooting US manufactured ammunition, uh, the 13 pound spring is going to be fine. The 12 pound spring is a little better. Um, and I would, I would say that you're probably not going to have any issues with US made uh, ammunition. Uh, the big issue that comes into play is that if you treat your guns like crap and you let crap get into the firing pin channel and all those kind of things that can slow that firing pin down, then yeah, the, the heavier spring starts to become an issue. And the reason the D model spring is what it is in the Beretta is it's something they can issue to a guy and he's going to abuse and there's going to be freaking, you know, donut powder down into the gun and all the other kind of stuff. I, I mean, I say that only partially joking yeah, yeah. because I've seen stuff come out of holsters. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like cobwebs and yeah. you know french fries and all kinds of shit <laughs> and then you're going well yeah that might cause a problem and then in that case it doesn't matter whose gun it is yeah. and so the d model spring where it really shines is it's a you know it's a service capable spring whereas the if you're going to take care of your gun you can get away with uh if you're using quality ammunition and you're taking care of your gun you can get away with a lot more well, so, and as you know uh, with my Breda 92A1s with the 12 pound hammer spring in them, I have about 10,000 rounds through one gun that you did that full house mm -hmm. custom on, and I've had a singular stoppage in the gun. I had a stove pipe on a uh, round that felt incredibly weak. When the gun went off, mm -hmm. it was more of a poof than a bang. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been it. The gun has been 100% reliable, except for that one round not the gun's fault um on everything that i've shot through no, so nobody 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 that knows what they're talking about says that the 92 is not an incredibly reliable gun yeah for sure yeah, yeah. Yes. so if they want a uh, a trigger kit in a bag where are they going to go get it ernest uh langdon tactical.com okay langdon tactical. and if instead they they lust after spencer's super whamadine custom rig same place same place you contact us and, and we'll yeah. get it done depending on what you want we'll, we'll get it done uh, bring a whole a freight train full of money and uh, we'll make it happen it's actually not that bad right? <laughs> I, 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 and i I'm keep being told what, guys. he tells me all the time dude you should raise the price on that yes. trigger job it, in a bag it, it's, it's way worth way more cheap. than it is it's worth way more money than what it is nice uh and uh, the difference between the two of them even though i have trigger jobs in a bag some of my other guns are going to go to him we've already talked about it and he's going to do another full house custom a little different color scheme um and it's, you can stop anytime you want, huh, Spencer? Uh, uh, you can no, stop uh, anytime you want, huh? The, the admitting of a problem is that you admit you have a problem, yeah, yeah. and I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I, I don't it. have a problem. You have a problem. I, have I don't a have problem. a problem. I'm good. <laughs> awesome, man. I think what a great choice. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, that traditional double action, if you want to get into that game, this is the way to do it. Yeah, 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 it's really, really, really interesting a lot, stuff. A lot of benefits. <coughs> um, and it's something very quickly, the thing, especially carrying appendix, one of the great benefits is 
when you're reholstering a gun, putting your thumb on the yeah, back of the over. hammer, then blocking, blocking the trigger, um, get that, you know, forward little lean and uh, holster the gun appendix. Uh, it's the safest way you can reholster a gun. Sure. When you put so. your thumb on the back of that hammer, you're positively controlling the firing mechanism of the gun. Uh, you can't, the gun can't cock and fire. I mean, you could, you'd probably have to break your finger uh, to overcome sure. the mechanical force there. Uh, and if anything gets in the way, your thumb's gonna feel, hey, something's not right. Something Whereas if right. you've got a striker fired gun, when you, you realize that something's in the trigger guard, then you hear the loud noise and smoke is coming from your pants. Yes. Well, and it's at holstering that you see those problems. Yep. Not unholstering usually, yep. not drawing. Uh, it's putting the gun back, back in the bucket. In the and if yeah. you, you know, again, if you use good techniques, like I teach in my AIWB skills class, you're gonna be fine, but there's a lot of reassurance right here. Another layer of safety don't hurt you. Absolutely. Doesn't hurt you. Awesome. Guys, thanks for your time. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.